I want to talk about two game shows I remember as a kid, which were not just game shows, but video game game shows, Video Power and Nick Arcade. Today, you might be able to see them in bits and pieces on YouTube, taken from old VHS recordings. And it's funny to think, as a kid, we used to get real excited about these kind of shows. First up, Video Power. It was on the air from 90 to 92. It was strange because it wasn't on Saturday mornings or weekdays after school. It played before school. It was on weekday mornings. I can't remember the exact time, but I think it was 6.30. So I've only seen this show while half asleep. But it was my morning call. It was what got me out of bed. That theme song. My show is kicking with maximum hype. Video power, yeah, that's right, word. Yeah, that's right, word. I remember it as a game show, but it actually began as a cartoon. I must have started watching later. It was bookended by live action segments with Johnny Arcade, the cool, hip skateboarding kid. He actually gets on the skateboard just to skate from one side of the room to the next. Yeah. He introduces the cartoon, which is the main part of the show. It's called The Power Team, and it's a lot like Captain N because it brings together lots of characters from games. But they're not really the most well-known games. They use uh, Narc, Wizards and Warriors, Quirk, Arch Rivals, and Bigfoot. Yeah. After the cartoon ended, Johnny Arcade would talk about how much it ruled and then give you some video game tips. Reminder, back then, seeing playback of video games was a huge deal. Season 2 is when it became a game show, with Johnny as the host. There was a segment where kids from the audience would try to stump him with game questions. It was called Johnny on the Spot. When he'd get the question right, he'd be all cocky about it, but if he got it wrong, he'd get all upset like, No fair! Either way, he'd overreact because that was his character. Then he'd quiz the contestants, asking them questions that they'd buzz in to answer. The main part of the show was when contestants would compete in a time trial of a video game, usually NES from what I remember, and if you've seen the movie The Wizard, it was just like that, and had a co-host who would commentate in a fast sports kind of way, like this was some intense shit going on. The winner would get to do every kid's dream, run through a maze of video games wearing a Velcro suit. They'd grab as many games as possible and stick them to the suits and then go down a slide. If they found a certain game within the time limit, they'd win a prize like a Neo Geo. It was the first and only time I ever heard of a Neo Geo when it was current. Looking back at the show, Johnny Arcade acted like a nutcase. He was always at a 10, like flailing his arms around, doing voice impersonations. I mean, he couldn't even sit down without kicking his feet all over the place. (coughs) Obviously, he was just trying to be an entertaining host, but he forgot to be a regular human being. There's no trace of normalcy. He's always on. Hulk! Hogan! You know, brother man, come on, dude, man! Sorry, every time I say that, I just snap into that. Here we go. You into that stuff? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm scaring. I'm making him nervous. Those kids must have felt so awkward. You can see they're all like, uh, okay. Do you think my feet smell? Do you, do you, do you, do you think? No. Did that just happen? Seriously. Tell me if that really happened. Do you think my feet smell? Do you, do you, do you, do you think? No. He's always grabbing the contestants on the shoulders, you know, patting them on the back, putting, you know, his arm around, giving them the handshakes. If I were one of those kids, I'd be like, geez, get away from me. But hey, it was an awesome way to start the mornings. It's extremely dated. It's a product of its time. Um, just a little time capsule of my generation. The other show, Nick Arcade, named after its network Nickelodeon, was also from the early 90s, but seems to be more well-known. It was a lot more accessible because it aired on weekends. I don't remember what time, but it wasn't at the ass crack of dawn like Video Power. Also, they played reruns all the way till 97, from what I've gathered. Today, lots of it's on YouTube, so this show's less obscure. It was hosted by Phil Moore, who also hosted a few other Nickelodeon shows. He was a reasonable, cool, friendly host. Nothing crazy like Johnny Arcade. 
It was the same type of idea, kid contestants step up to compete in video games, but the main thing that sets this apart was that most of the games were custom made. Sometimes they'd play games we'd know, like Sonic the Hedgehog, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and Battletoads, but most of the games were exclusive to the show. They were generic point and shoot kind of games, some were like Pong, where you just volley a projectile back and forth, whether it was Star Defenders, Brainstorm, or Battle the Bands, it was all the same game with a different theme. Jet Jocks was a side-scrolling Wave Runner race, and Crater Rangers was the same exact thing, except on wheels on an alien planet. One of them was like a board game where the contestants would verbally control a character called Mikey who would walk around on these tiles. They'd say, Mikey, go right, or Mikey, go left. When he'd land on certain tiles, it would uncover a trivia question or a puzzle or something like that. I wonder if these games are available to play anywhere. I haven't found anything, but you'd think with the cult fan base and the rise of video games and nostalgia, someone may at least recreate them. But for me, as a kid, the sole reason why this show was a big deal was because of the final segment. The winning team would go into a sci-fi door with fog and colored lights, the doors would close, and next thing, they were inside a video game. As a kid, this blew my mind. Never before had I seen a live person hopping around inside of a video game. Nowadays, you can do it on your own computer very easily, but back then, we had no clue how it was done. I think I knew about blue screens, but the part that boggled my brain was how the kids would know where to jump and dodge. Like, how could they see the game if it didn't really exist? I'm sure they had some kind of TV screen they were looking at. Um, they walk up stairs and interact with physical objects that are probably actually there but are blue so they're keyed out and replaced with the game graphics. I've managed to find a little bit of behind the scenes footage and it's what you'd expect. It kind of spoils the mystery. It's more fun thinking back to the days when you'd see those kids disappear into that room and you never knew what exactly did those kids see on the other side. It's still pretty impressive how well it was done. The graphics would have to respond to what the kids were doing. If they grabbed an item or took out an enemy, it would have to trigger the computer to make that enemy disappear or whatever. It really was a cool idea. The kids were riding a magic carpet, climbing a mountain, having a food fight in a school cafeteria, sneaking around a haunted house, fighting aliens in a city, Godzilla style, having snowball fights with elves, and then there was the main villain, Mongo. So there you go. Um, just wanted to share the memories, that's all. So uh, let me know if you remember these shows too.